right now we're doing an interview with two of the sexiest men from Woodstock. Maybe, actually, not really. And Robert Lockhart. Robert Lockhart is one of my heroes. He can actually walk across a whole football field on his hands. I can walk maybe, uh, I can't even walk. <laughs> anyway, the reason why I talk to Robert Lockhart, we have a lot in common. Besides being the two oldest men on the uh, Woodstock. Actually, Woodstock is, uh, we're having a fun time. Super time. Mostly all ages. All ages, but a lot of uh, young girls in their 20s and 30s, which I enjoy watching. <laughs> anyway, why don't you talk about um, dry fast? Because that's something that we never really discuss. To me, dry fast is a, I'm a big believer in dry fast. But you know much more than I. You're on. Yes. Why don't you introduce well, yourself? Okay. Yes, my, my name is Robert Lockhart. I'm uh, 70 years old. I um, have been a raw vegan for 25 years. Prior to that, I was vegetarian since I was 24, so that's 45 years vegetarian, wow. I guess. And um, I originally had to do some short water fasts, and I've conducted water fasts up to 39 days. Um, but more lately, within the last 10 years, there's been more and more work and research about dry fasting come to the fore, especially in Russia. And I uh, had some dental work done, actually in the Philippines. After that dental work, um, one of the, uh, the tooths was still cracked, apparently, and um, it gave me a lot of trouble. My face swelled right up. And I thought, God, I'm gonna have this tooth pulled out. So I did a short dry fast. I'd learnt about it from Russia. I thought, God, I'm just gonna stop drinking, stop eating. You know, with the first 24 hours, it was, yeah, it was kind of tough. The second 24 hours I did it, the swelling went down completely, the pain gone. Yeah. And I just continued on for 48 hours. I did did it 48-hour um, dry fast and um, by that time all the symptoms were gone and I haven't had the, the problem come back, back again so that was enough to convince me okay um, the fact is that when you stop eating and when you stop drinking your body doesn't stop living the cells don't stop living they just shift their mode of operation the water that you still require is called metabolic water and it is a product product of your metabolism because glucose when it is broken down and oxidized produces energy co2 and water and that water is the purest water you can get so that water is available to you when you're dry fasting so strictly speaking even though you're not taking anything in per mouth you're still getting water okay a dry fast is three times more effective than a water fast. Wow. So you've got, uh, if you really haven't got time to go to a fasting institution and uh, spend three weeks on your back drinking water, consider a water fast. But you have to build up to be able to do a water fast. I would suggest that you do not do it unless you've been on raw foods for two years. You're talking about dry fast. Yes, I'm talking about a dry fast. Yes. You should not do it unless you are um, familiar first with some short water fasts and juice fasts, okay? And you should not do it unless you are um, two years experienced on raw foods, quite frankly. By that time, your body has detoxed. It has become so much more efficient. If you're doing a water fast and you're still living totally on cooked foods, you're going to have a tremendous amount of release of toxins. And if you've got a particularly one weak organ, that weak organ could break down, okay? Wow. So it could be overwhelmed by those toxins. And um, this is in a nutshell of what um, What do you think of, uh, I do like 15 hours a day, I shoot for 15 hours a day from 6 p.m. to 10 a.m. Do you think the average person can do that or they should do like 12 hours? They should start with uh, 12 hours, build up 13, 14 to...
probably between 16 and 18 hours every day. Every Myself, day. I stop eating between 2 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. And then do not eat again until 9 or 9.30 the next day. For 20 years I did a no breakfast program, okay? No breakfast, so in effect. But that goes against your natural circadian rhythm in your body. Your body is most um, adaptable to utilizing food um, early in the morning when you digest. So early, the liver at its optimal level at about 11 o'clock in the morning and the digestive system, okay? So why not utilize that? So if you're just totally fasting then, um, that's not optimizing your circadian uh, rhythm. And uh, your digestive tract uh, is most active around about 11 to, to, to 2 o'clock. That's then, when you eat? Yeah, that's when you should eat. Wait, wait, how many calories do you take in a day? Based on probably around about 1,500 or so. I'm not, I'm not a, as you get older, you, you know, and uh, the longer you've been on raw foods, the more efficient your body becomes at utilizing um, energy and nutrient from a given amount of food. Right. So that's basically. It seems like when I drive fast, I need less calories. You do. Your body will be cl uh, more cleansed, and right. um, you'll be able to utilize um, uh, more uh, energy and more nutrients from a given amount of food. Whereas it might take someone that's just coming new into the life; they still need 3,000 or 4,000 calories a day just to maintain weight. Right. But as you've been into it for a while, you'll need far less. Okay. And what do you think about, there's a new thing going out in raw food world, raw till four. I know you have, you have your opinions on that. Yeah. Raw till four is a great um, transition. Right. But the trouble, you've got to realize, cooked food is addictive. And if you're still feeling as though you're addicted to it, um, it's going to get stronger and more difficult actually for you uh, to give up that addiction. Right. <laughs> I've... Um, uh, compared many people, and I did a talk here to over a hundred people yesterday wow. about Rortel 4, and um, I compared two people that were on the same path, one on the path of 100% raw, the other on the path of uh, 75 or Rortel 4 sort of situation, you know? I'm Rortel 4, but then after 4 I don't eat. So, oh. you know, that's it. Right, right. That's a big four. difference. <laughs> yeah. That's a huge difference. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's that's just the difference. So right. um, what I think of Rortel 4, I think it's great, a good transition. But right. you do have to be aware that right. you will not cure uh, niggling uh, health problems later in your life if you are persisting just with Rortel 4. In order to say, for example, me, I had some varicose veins and I had hemorrhoids, and they wouldn't cure. Um, while I was doing yeah. Rortel 4. When I go 100% raw, they're gone. Vanish like the mist before the sun. Oh. So everything went, pretty much went away once... Once went, I went 100%, got off the raw. How long have you been 100% by the way? 20, I told you, 25 years. You've been 100% 25 years? Yes! Wow! Wow! <laughs> So you're no messing around. No messing around. I'm no in the whole profession. <laughs> right. Wow. I'm not 100%. Yeah. Wow. I would be just like you. <laughs> yeah, you could be. But I utilize corrective exercise. There's a whole bunch of other things coming right, to it. Right, you've, got right. to, you've got to look at an all-sided approach, not a one-sided approach. Right, you right. Know? But you're so much better off than the average um, By the way, this young man here. here has a 20-year-old girlfriend. No, 30, man. 30! <laughs> Don't say 20, she'll kill me. <laughs> that and she's not my girlfriend, she's my partner. Oh, Park, I love yeah. that. I love that. There's hope for me yet. <laughs> oh, no, it's all good. All good. <laughs> yes. Anyway, yeah. is that all you wanted to ask me yeah. about, Arnold? Anything else you want, anything else you want to say? <laughs> There's lots of things I could say, but. Say something you, you know, want to say. We talked about know. autism, right? Oh, you were talking about autism. Yeah, it's big in, it's big in Australia oh, too. It's big in Australia. Big! Yes. No reason. The reason is that the, the, the kids are being brought up in, uh, artificially and unnaturally, and as a consequence, they're having to give them all these artificial 
poisons directly in injected into their bloodstream, which are called vaccinations. Right. And so many reactions, and uh, I'm not saying autism is totally caused by vaccines, but I know the, the statistics. I'm that. Yeah. I better not. The statistics do definitely show that um, right. the uh, higher the vaccination rate, the higher right. the autistic rate. Right. You know? And isn't it true that what you told me that the Center for Disease Control in the United States said that within every boy born by your 2032 are autism. Every boy, boy born, born in the year 2032 are autism. Right now in New Jersey, it's one out of every 49. Mm -hmm. They also they are also placed in Chicago where they don't have 35,000 kids in their uh, control, whatever it is. 35,000 births, not one autism, not one vaccine. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So we got a big job if, to do. If, you know, we've got a big Australia, job. We just need to, we've got to get the message across right. that healthful living promotes health, healthy bodies and healthy minds, you know. You don't want a, um, a population that's got a sick mind, do you? Sick right. minds, because that's, that's um, so much drain on the healthcare, so much crime, so much this and that. Doesn't the government realize you've got to They don't realize health? it. Don't you realize you know? what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> They don't realize it. You know why? They're controlled too by the medical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they they got big bucks for being what they do. Yeah. Ah uh, well. Anyway, we we can. Uh, we just we do can, the best we can, right? We do, and I we enjoy it. So. Right. I got to the Philippines. It's a nice place in the Philippines. Why don't you say give a buzzword for the Philippines? Yeah, the Philippines. I um, do like that part of the world. It consists of seven thousand islands in the Philippines. Okay. Seven thousand islands. Islands. Yes, different islands. Uh, the people are generally quite friendly towards Americans, right. Australians, and um, the. You're uh, from cost... Australia too. Make sure everyone knows that. Yeah, I'm from Australia. The cost of living there in the Philippines is um, probably mm, a quarter of what it is in America, just about or less. Well, you're you telling know. me that you live a beach. You have a beachfront property <laughs> with furniture. Well, you can rent. It's possible. You can rent a hundred and fifty dollars a month. month. Yes. Beachfront property, $150 a month. <laughs> that means uh, when I retire, I may go to the Philippines. <laughs> yeah. Become your next door neighbor. Me and Deanna. <laughs> okay, why not? Okay. <laughs> anyway, anything else? No. That's, that's it. Anyway, good. live from Woodstock. Yeah. Hopefully, we do put up more videos. I got a lot more people. Anyway, give, give me a big hug. Yay! Thank you, <laughs> I'll see you.